How does it get better than this? Talking about beer and politics. Oh, it's good. Chad Miller is the owner, operator, developer, founder, artist, uh, beer crafter of Black Shirt Brewery. Do I have that right? Black Shirt Brewing Company, correct. All right. I'm drinking your Red Porter. It ain't bad. And what makes it really good? I didn't pay for it. So thank you. <laughs> the reason I wanted to chat with you is I found your story fascinating. You love beer and all you wanted to do is do this, but the government really didn't want you to do this, or so it seemed. Tell me, first of all, tell me why you wanted to become a brewer. You know, I, I think it was a, uh, an art form that was taught to me by my family that I fell in love, absolutely fascinated with uh, fermentation, um, the ability to creatively, uh, you know, have an outlet to, you know, hopefully make my mark. You said um, you wanted to do this, to own your own brewery since you were a kid. Correct. Really? Absolutely. You don't want to be a fireman, an astronaut, you wanted to own a brewery? <laughs> you know, I was the valedictorian of my high school class and I was supposed to go off and do some really great things. You did, this is some um, damn good brew. I wanted to build a brewery, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I think that uh, um, I, there's a lot of things that I could have done that would make my, my mom uh, more proud of me, possibly. But How did it start? Uh, you started in your home. Yes, uh, home brewer, um, taught on a, a really technical level from my godfather and second cousin. Um, we learned brewing is not a, a, a means for a you know a liquid to, to get you intoxicated, but more as a, something to complement a meal uh, as an art form. And so that appreciation was instilled in me when I was 18. Uh, I fell in love with it. Me and my brother struck out in 1999 to uh, to build. Uh, what was going to become Blackshear Brewing Company? And you, you. When did you start doing it for profit? Uh, we opened to the public uh, here in the River North neighborhood about uh, three and a half years and ago. Did you do this in your home? We did. <clears throat> and was that a problem? When did you start getting into trouble? I guess is what I want to know. When? Yeah. You, I mean, you are trying to be a brewer in what is the Napa Valley of breweries, you know, areas here Absolutely. in Colorado. You know, you, you can't you can't throw a dead cat without hitting a brewery in this town. <laughs> you know, so you've got yeah. a lot of competition. Then all of a sudden, your job gets harder. Tell me the first go around with with the government. Yeah, we uh, um, you know we we started out of uh, a house in South Denver, and uh, we found out that the street that we had purchased a house on was actually zoned for business. The zoning had never changed. Um, people built a bunch of houses on the street. We didn't really know about that until a winery opened up uh, down the street from us. So we approached the city uh, after a few months of uh, going round and round with them. They said, you know, we don't see a problem with you opening a brewery. Um, in your house? Yep, out of my garage. Um, we applied to the TTB, the federal agency, uh, that would allow us to open TTB? a TTB? Yes, uh, the ATF. Oh, I got yeah, it. The, the, now they're the TTB. Oh, they nice. Switch things around on you. All right, so alcohol, tobacco, firearms, you say, yep. can I please have a go risking all my life savings in, in making beer? Absolutely. And they made it easy for you? Uh, not exactly. Um, this is uh, nine months of us submitting paperwork, petitioning, uh, you know, going around to our neighborhood, gathering the support uh, to um, allow us to, to do it. Once we did that, we had to be approved on a, a county, a city level, and then uh, the state level, and then the federal level. All right, so you got all those, all the paperwork. How long did it take? Uh, start to finish about, uh, you know, nine, 10 months or so. All right, so just be, before, you could, before you could make your very first one of these, 10 months of paperwork. Before we could, we could actually sell it to okay. the, the public, yeah. And then after that, it was, it was smooth sailing. Everything no. worked. Worked pretty well. Absolutely not. What do you mean? What happened? <laughs> uh, they informed us that uh, there was uh, they had changed the rules and that the who's they? Uh, the, this would be the TTB. They changed uh, the, the rules. The the garage uh, that housed the brewery. Uh, we spent uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars outfitting this our garage to be our fifty thousand. Correct. Well, you're obviously a man of means. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so they said that because the garage was attached to the house. Um, they would no longer allow us to operate a, a commercial brewery. If it was detached by three inches, we'd be allowed to. Because your garage was attached, you couldn't do it. If there was three inches of separation, then you'd be okay. Correct. And so what did they do? 
Um, they basically said that we were no longer allowed to operate. We would need to go and find a commercial location, an industrial location to brew our beer. So here you are, a small businessman, and I'm assuming, what are you living on at this point? Um, well, I was, uh, you know, operating a brewery out of a, a house is, is not a profitable venture. We would simply uh, make enough money to brew the next batch. This was getting their name out. So we knew this was a short time. Um, a short-term thing for us anyways. I just didn't think we were going to be chopped like that and then for three we're, inches we're, we're out of business. What did you do? Uh, cried. Uh, uh, you know, this is my life savings that I put into this. Uh, I can't afford to, I couldn't even afford the lights at another location, a, a commercial location at this time. So uh, you, you'd have to rent out a whole new place. Correct. And right now you're not paying rent. This is your home. You know, so this this was your margin. Yes. If you actually had to go someplace where you had to either rent or buy, it's just, it's, there's no way for you to do it. Absolutely not. All right. So what did you end up doing? So uh, about uh, two years later, long story short, um, we we stuck with our plan. We're gonna. I was gonna build a brewery. I wasn't gonna let anything stop me. Um, Fourteen years after we planned it, we opened uh, just around the corner from this studio here, uh, 3719 Walnut Street. And uh, it was a dilapidated warehouse five and a half years ago. This neighborhood is nothing like it is today. Um, the rent was cheap. Uh, There's a lot of artists. Uh, we got into this building that had been vacant for two years and um, started uh, building Black Street Brewing Company. So you had uh, how, how, every night after work. How much time did it take? It took me two, <coughs> two and a half years. Two and a half years. So you, so you were in business and then you were out of business for two and a half years because, yeah. because of the ATF. Correct. Lovely. Changing, changing the rules. Kim right. Jordan with New Belgium started her brewery out of the basement of her house. No longer would you be allowed to do that. All right. So you, you can't. Apple computer was made in a garage. You yeah. can't do that anymore. You tried to start your business out it's of the garage. the rules. Now. All right. So you move into this. You move. <laughs> you move around the corner here. Correct. Uh, a very fancy upscale neighborhood at the time. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so then everything was okay. Not exactly. I mean, uh, not exactly. You have a brewery. You have. You have your own. Commercial location, you're fine. Well, um, nobody would lend us any money uh, for a brand new business. Very, very risky. Uh, we weren't commercial brewers. Right. Uh, nobody would lend us the money. We would. I would work. Uh, so you're, it's a chicken and egg problem. You're not a real brewer, so we're not giving you a loan. You can't get a loan. You can't get the money to become a real brewer. Correct. All right. Yep. Uh, so we. Uh, I worked a, a full time job, about 14 hours a day. I would get off work and then. What I job was it? To, I managed a collision repair shop. Ooh, nice. All right, so you do collision yeah. repair yes. for 14 hours a day. You come home and you work on this in your new warehouse space. Correct. All right. One or two in the morning. And now it's a success. No. Uh, what happened? Well, it took me two years to, to build this place out. I would literally build a wall, wait for my next paycheck to build the rest of the wall and afford some of the drywall. Wait till my next paycheck to be able to paint the, that wall. Um, Took me two two and a half years with my brother and my wife. Um, all along, we had to get uh, permits for the work that was done. Um, well, they had changed the the uh, the code for our electrical, so everything was approved, approved, approved. Next year, we go for our final inspection. They said that they had changed the uh, the electrical code and that we would have to strip out 5,000 feet of wire out of our building to. Uh, to get our certificate. 5,000 feet of wire. So in the same way, yeah. the ATF said you're fine, you start moving, they say no, your garage is three inches too close. Now you build out this space, you're doing it after hours, after you work 14 hours a day, you set it up to the code that they said, and then the government says, oh, those rules, eh, not so much. You have to then rip out how many? 5,000 5, feet of wire. Correct. Put it back in a different way. But at least then, you're fine after that, right? No, uh, before we were allowed to uh, operate, we needed to change out a water line that um, that had been installed and wasn't up to code. So we changed that out. Um, Thirty thousand dollars after that, um, electrical uh, did another inspection and said that we didn't have enough power to run the uh, our our tiny little brew system, ten gallon system, two two ten gallon systems at this time. Two ten gallon systems. The, but uh, did they not tell you that earlier? No. 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 So they just keep changing the rules every time you try to get 
get done at the project. You know, it seemed that way. There was, uh, there was a lot of government furlough days, a lot of people being laid off. Um, so we would talk to the new person that had another, you know, other stipulations that we would have to, you know, and we'd say, well, well you know, this gentleman said that, you know, if we did this, we'd be fine. Uh, well, that so gentleman's idea, not with us anymore. The idea of rule of law is that the rules apply to everyone the same way. But if regulators can change the rules anytime they want, and it's up to the person, I mean, think about this, it's up to the person who happens to be implementing the laws, I get to change them, and the next guy comes around and says, no, nah, it's this way now, now it's that way. In the meantime, it's taking away tens of thousands of dollars, your hard-earned labor, and you're still waiting. Did you finally get it up and running? Finally. <laughs> Tell me about the fence. Was there a, you have, a, you have an outside area. Did you do the fence the right way? Uh, we got the, the, the patio. Uh, we wanted to put a patio in. This is an old warehouse, um, you know, for us to uh, um, attract our guests. And right. we, we felt like we needed to put a patio in like all the other breweries had. Right. Um, so we not applied for a patio. patio. So you could have a beer. Have a beer. This out. is Colorado Sunshine. Right. Yep. Uh, so uh, they first, you know, said, well, you're a, you're a brewery. Uh, you're a manufacturer. You can't have a patio. Uh, you'll be the only, you'll be the only brewery with a patio. You'll be the pioneer. And, sure. you know, here we are, we're like, the, every other brewery in this town has a patio. But it doesn't uh, even matter. It's your damn space. And you have to go <laughs> ask Mother May I to put a patio in front of your own damn business. All right, so do they let you do it? Let you do it. Think about that. They let you do it. We've only got a minute. So. They allowed me to do it. Uh, six months later, um, we finally got the permit. We installed the patio. They came Terrific. in for a final inspection after they approved the drawings and said that the patio was three inches beyond um, what was allowed. And three so inches. We had to take the patio back out, the, the fencing around the patio, uh, cut everything down, weld it back together, uh, bring it back three that inches. Um, you know, it wasn't terribly expensive, a couple thousand bucks, but uh, when, we, when we're making sense... We're going to run out of time here, but the point <laughs> is, I'm drinking some really good beer here from Black, Sheep, uh, uh, Black Shirt Brewery, and you guys just want to go out and compete in the market, which is dangerous enough, but the city and the, the feds won't let you. Hey, people want to go out and have one of these. Where do they go? Real fast. Uh, 65 uh, liquor stores around town. 3719 Walnut Street is where you'll get it straight out of the tap, fresh as you can get it. Chad, keep on keeping on, and thank you, <laughs> government workers, for making his life so much hell. Check out the Independence Institute, and we'll see you next week.